Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at this all new Sunfounder 10.1 inch IPS LCD for the Raspberry Pi. Now recently on the channel we took a look at a similar screen, but it was 8 inches, it was a 4x3 aspect ratio, and it didn't have any speakers built in whatsoever. But this one changes all of that. With a 10.1 inch 16x9 LCD and dual stereo speakers built into the back. Nowadays, it's pretty easy to pick up a display for your Raspberry Pi. You can get an LCD TV for pretty cheap. A 32-inch 720p goes for around 130 to 150, or you can pick up a 21-inch 1080p monitor for around 65 to 70. But one of the big reasons I love these tailor-made displays for the Raspberry Pi is the Raspberry Pi actually sits inside of here. It'll mount to the back of the unit, giving us kind of a Raspberry Pi-powered all-in-one Linux PC. And this one here is pretty nice. We also have HDMI in, VGA in, you mount the Raspberry Pi on the back, we have dual stereo speakers, we got all of our controls up here, even volume, and we got a nice little 10.1 inch IPS display for the Pi. Now this whole kit here is coming in at $99 without a Raspberry Pi, you will have to add one. You can get a Raspberry Pi 4, 2 gigabyte model, 4 gigabyte model, or 8 gigabyte model. It also comes with a few accessories like a 6 foot HDMI cable. We got a camera mount in case you wanna add a Raspberry Pi camera to the top of this. We have the back plate along with a fan and heat sinks for the Raspberry Pi. And finally, the power supply. Now this whole unit runs on 12 volts, but it'll also work on 5 volts. So if you do want to add a battery pack to this unit, you can have a totally portable Raspberry Pi set up. And that's exactly how I'm going to be running it in this video, just to give you an idea of how this would work on battery power. And it actually functions really, really well. Not to mention, we also have an extra HDMI and VGA in, in case you want to add some other device to this unit, or just use this as an external display for another PC or a laptop. Now, putting this thing together is super easy. It's very self-explanatory, but it does come with full instructions. Real quick, I'm just going to give you a rundown on how I put this together. So it does come with heat sinks for the Raspberry Pi 4. I've already applied them to the CPU, the RAM, and the Ethernet controller. I'm just going to plug in the micro HDMI to one of the micro HDMI connectors on the Raspberry Pi. Next up, I'll do my USB Type-C to power the unit. And basically, this is just going to mount down with four screws. Before you assemble this, make sure you have your SD card installed because you cannot access it while this is all together. So I'll just mount the Raspberry Pi down with four of the included screws. And once that's done, we'll grab the back cover here. Don't forget to plug your fan in. It's got the little connector in here. And this is actually running on 3.3 volts, so it's pretty quiet. It's really hard to hear this fan. It's not a super annoying one. Once the back is on, we're going to place the other screws in here, and we'll have full access to the GPIO pins, Ethernet, and USB on the Raspberry Pi. Like I mentioned, before you assemble this, make sure you have your SD card ready to go and insert it into the Raspberry Pi. And here it is. So yeah, we do have access to all that external I.O. on the Raspberry Pi, even the GPIO pins. It's pretty lightweight because the whole unit is made of plastic. It does come with that stand on the back so we can stand this up. Now it's time to get into some testing. Like I said, this runs on 12 volts from the factory, but with the correct USB adapter, you can actually power this from a 5 volt battery bank like a phone charger. All right, so here it is. I got Raspberry Pi OS set up on a micro SD card for that Raspberry Pi 4. We're using wall power right now, the included 12 volt, 3 amp power supply. Got a fold out Bluetooth keyboard and a Bluetooth controller here, just so we could test out a little bit of gaming. First thing I wanted to do was just take a look at the screen like it sits right out of the box with wall power. And by the way, the screen itself does have volume control. We have brightness control, contrast, all the settings we need for an LCD panel are included with this unit here. Real quick, let me go ahead and make sure my keyboard is on and my remote. It should automatically repair with the Raspberry Pi because I've set it up before. And just give it a few seconds to connect. It's definitely not the best Bluetooth keyboard, but it does have this trackpad here. And when it is working, it does work quite well. I actually think I'm getting a little bit of interference when trying to pair that controller up, but it seems to be working now. As you can see, we got that trackpad here. You can easily navigate the operating system, and like you saw, this keyboard does fold up. It'll actually fit right in your back pocket. And a little bit of a sound test here. It does have those dual stereo speakers built in. You can control it from within the operating system or on the screen itself. We do have manual controls. So now I want to show you that this whole setup will work over battery power. So what I have here is a 10,000 milliamp hour little phone charger. It's a battery bank. 
And I also have this little adapter here, full size USB on one side, 5.5 millimeter power jack on the other. But personally, I would recommend something like this. And if I had it on hand right now, that's what I'd be using. This is USB type C to a 5.5 millimeter power jack. That way we could send a full five volts, three amps out of the USB type C port on one of these little portable chargers to the unit itself. But like it sits right now over this cable that I'm using, I have not experienced any kind of cutout or any low power indicator on the Raspberry Pi. And this was actually really surprising because most of the time, these USB ports only put out about 2.4 amps. And by the way, the power bank that I'm using right now is actually an inexpensive one that you can pick up from Walmart. It's an ONN or an on-branded power bank. And I personally like these little power banks because they do have that little LCD charge indicator on them, letting us know how much is left in the battery itself. I'm gonna go ahead and let this boot up. And by the way, I will leave links in the description in case you're interested in picking up anything that you see in this video. Most of it can be gotten on Amazon, but that power bank is available at Walmart. And the first time I plugged all this in, I didn't think it was going to work at all. I figured that we were just doing some power cut in here with the screen coming on and off. But as you can see, the Raspberry Pi 4 does boot up and I'm not getting any kind of low power indicator on screen whatsoever. I've also got a mouse and keyboard plugged in here just to make it a little easier to navigate. I want to make sure the sound is still working here when we're on battery power. There's really no reason it shouldn't be. And as you can hear, we got sound out of this. So now I want to move over to YouTube real quick. We're going to test a little bit of video playback that's going to put a little bit of a load on that CPU just to show you that we're not getting any kind of low power indication. And then I'm going to move over to some emulation with Dreamcast. So going full screen with it here. No problem at all. I mean, we are powered by this little battery bank here. If you press that button, it'll come up with that indicator. And I was super surprised by this because, like we saw, this should be powered by 12 volts, but it's working over this 5 volt battery pack. And I still have that little Bluetooth slash trackpad connected to it. I just wanted to move over to something a little bigger. It does make it easier to navigate. But keep in mind, something like this will work with the Raspberry Pi in case you want to set up a fully portable all-in-one Linux machine. So I definitely want to move over to a little bit of emulation on this screen with the Raspberry Pi 4. But before I do that, I'm actually going to let this run for about 30 more minutes and just see what happens. All right, so as you can see with NeoFetch here, I've been up and running for about 48 minutes and my battery percentage went down to 84%. And that was just playing some YouTube videos here. Actually surprised it didn't go down any more, but so far it has been working off this battery pack quite well. So now I want to move over to something a little more demanding and that'll be some Dreamcast emulation using Redream. We'll go ahead and launch it here. I'll be using this 8 Bluetooth controller here. And keep in mind, I'm not overclocked on this Raspberry Pi at all. It's sitting at the stock clocks, especially on battery power. So I'm gonna go ahead and start up Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and get into a little bit of gameplay. So overall, running this screen and the Raspberry Pi 4 at the stock clocks from this battery pack hasn't given me any issues. I'm running a sysbench right now This is going to max out all four cores, and I don't have any kind of low voltage warning. Usually you get a little lightning bolt up in the top right hand corner. Now, like I mentioned, I would personally recommend going out of USB Type-C to that power jack on the side of the screen here. And with a battery pack like this, this actually does 5 volts, 3 amps through USB Type-C. But even set up like this over that USB port, it's working great. And if you did end up getting a battery pack about this size or the same battery pack and the screen, you could actually double side sticky tape it right to the back here. You'd still have access to that USB type C to charge it up. And then when you're ready to power up the unit itself, just run your cable from the battery pack to the power jack on the screen itself. And you can boot this thing right up. And if you paired this whole thing with one of these foldable keyboards with the trackpad built in, you could have a pretty portable setup. So overall, I do like this screen. It's got great brightness. I mean, it's super clean. It's an IPS display. 
but it's $99 without a Raspberry Pi, and I do think that's a bit overpriced. If this had a $69 price tag attached to it, I would say jump all over it, but at $99, I think it's a bit expensive for what we're getting here, unless you really need a portable solution like this. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. I figured I'd just go ahead and show this off. I was really surprised that it ran on 5 volts, and it actually works really well here, especially with the power supply I have. If you're interested in picking any of the stuff up that I showed off in this video, I will leave some links in the description. Like I mentioned, the screen itself is $99 and it is a bit overpriced, so definitely keep an eye out for like discounts and coupons on Amazon or SunFounder's website, because if you can pick this up for a little cheaper and you're looking for a portable Raspberry Pi screen, I think it'd be worth it at around $70. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.